Hi everyone. In today's lesson, we'll be taking a look at how to determine the rule of a sine function. So in your notebook, please put down today's subtitle, which is Finding the Rule of Sine Functions. Finding the rule of a sine function is very easy and involves a simple procedure that mostly relies on observation. The procedure consists of the following main steps. The first step is to pick the start of your cycle, thereby revealing the variables h and k. Keep in mind that in a sine function, the start of your cycle can either begin with a hump or with a dip. It will be completely up to you. The second step in the procedure is to draw a box starting from your chosen start of cycle that will enclose one whole cycle. Keep in mind that the cycle of a sine function contains a hump and a dip. Once the box is properly drawn, the next step involves simply determining the length of the box, which will reveal the length of the cycle, or the period, and that in turn will help us determine the value of the absolute value of b. The height of the box can help us determine the value of the absolute value of a. Keep in mind that in a sine function, the height of the box surrounding one cycle corresponds to double of the amplitude. Therefore, the amplitude itself corresponds to half the height of the box. And finally, determining the signs of the variables a and b will be dependent on where you chose to start your cycle. Let's take a look at an example to see this procedure in action. Please take a moment to very carefully produce the following graph. Go ahead, pause the video and do it now. With the example carefully drawn, let's take a look at the procedure. The first thing to do is to pick the start of your cycle, which will help us reveal an h and a k. Keep in mind that for a sine function, the start of a cycle can either begin with a hump or with a dip. So there are several possibilities in this graph. One possibility could be right here, in which case it will begin with a hump and end with a dip. Another possibility could be starting your cycle right here, in which case you will begin with a dip and then end with a hump. I will proceed in this example by using this one as my start point of the cycle. Therefore, my chosen start point corresponds to the point pi over 4 and 1. The next step in our procedure is to draw a box starting from our start point which will enclose one whole cycle. Again, a reminder that in a sine function, one whole cycle corresponds to a hump and a dip. In this case, because of my chosen start point, my box will enclose the cycle that begins with the hump and ends with a dip. With the box correctly drawn, we can now take advantage of the fact that the length of the box is equal to the period of this graph. In this example, the period will equal to the end of the box, which is located at 5 pi over 4, subtract the start of the box, which is at pi over 4, which will give us a period of 4 pi over 4, which reduces to simply pi. Now recall that the period of a sine function can be calculated with the formula 2 pi divided by the absolute value of b. Cross multiplying, we get that the absolute value of b is equal to 2 pi divided by pi. Therefore, the absolute value of b is equal to 2. We will decide whether this is going to be a positive 2 or a negative 2 a little bit later. Next, we may continue taking advantage of the box 
knowing that the height of the box corresponds to double of the amplitude. Therefore, the amplitude can be calculated by taking half the height of the box. In our example, that will correspond to a height of 4 divided by 2, which is 2. And that reveals to us the value of the absolute value of A. We will decide on the sign of A very shortly. Finally, because of our chosen start point, our cycle begins with a hump and ends with a dip. This means that the product of our A and B variables should produce a positive result. And the only way this can happen is if both A and B were positive or both A and B were negative. Putting all these clues together will produce us a final rule of y equals 2 sine of 2 multiplied by x minus pi over 4 plus 1. Or the second version, where both a and b are negative, the rule could also be negative 2 sine negative 2 multiplied by x minus pi over 4 plus 1. Please put a note to yourselves that your final rules may differ very much depending on your chosen start point. And that's all there is, ladies and gentlemen, to determining the rule of a sine function.